Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about ascending triangles. Now before I begin, I just want to let you guys know, I've been trading for about 5 years now as a professional trader. I know how to trade, I'm still getting used to how to explain stuff to you guys on YouTube. But what I've seen on YouTube is a lot of YouTubers kind of giving you guys some generic information that everybody seems to know. But they don't really teach you how to properly trade those patterns. They kind of give you the very simplified version that's not good at all. So. I'm going to be a little bit more boring and not as entertaining, but the information I give you will help you make money. And so I would please uh, ask that you guys watch the entire video here because this is crucial if you guys do want to go full time and really leave that nine to five job. Um, but yeah, enough ranting here. Let's just kind of get on with this. Um, we're going to be talking about the fact that this is a continuation pattern. And if you guys don't know what a continuation pattern here is for, you know, triangles in general, it pretty much means this. If the price starts off high, and then we start consolidating into an ascending triangle, more times than not, about 75% of the time, it will actually continue to continue the trend and we will break down and start going back down to new lows, all right? Now, not all time lows or anything like that, but just new lows from where we were before, all right? We continue down. And now, if on the other hand, we are coming up, we run into it, consolidate for a little bit, more times than not, about 75%, we will break out and that'll be a good move. It will continue the trend, a continuous pattern, continuing the trend, all right? So if you guys are finding trends that, you know, you see this pattern and we it started up higher, most likely it will actually continue going down. If it's been going up and then it hits this pattern, it will most likely keep going up. That's the main thing you guys should understand about this pattern, all right? That's the very, very basic. It can do a reversal. It's not as likely, but if it is, there's a it's going to be a little bit harder to trade. So I would say right now, just be careful with it. And I'll explain why a little bit later. Now, going here, I'm going to teach you guys. This is the what this is whatever YouTuber tells you. We consolidate for a little bit on the breakout. You buy the breakout and then you sell at the closest level of resistance, like up here a little bit, if you will. You sell right there. That's not really how you're supposed to do ascending triangles, especially if you guys are swing trading. And this video will focus more on swing trading because swing trading is how you will make the majority of your money in your trading careers. You guys may try to go down the day trading path. Uh, that's more for advanced traders and I would not recommend it until you guys really know what you're doing. And it all starts with swing trading. If you guys just try to go straight to, stay straight to day trading, excuse me, you will get annihilated in the market. You will have some good days in the, in the, you know, in the beginning afterwards it, it's 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 really going to hurt you there so let's talk about this here and let's just use uh for now let's pretend like you know we're going up here now a few things before you even make the trade before it even breaks out you have to be looking for uh if you guys are using trading view you're just going to be looking on the chart to make sure that you don't see an e anywhere near the current candle and what that e represents is earnings you don't want to trade during earnings because if the stock is looking like it's going to do fine, even if it breaks out, if the earnings report is bad, you will see a massive red candle that will make you lose any like lose any hope of making profits, okay? So avoid that E right there. It's a very small E. You'll see it on TradingView or if you're on TD Ameritrade or whatever, you'll see the earnings, okay? Same with the D for dividends. Same with D for dividends. Uh, depending on the chart you guys are using, whether you know whatever one, whichever one you guys are using, you, you'll see an E and D, or maybe uh, maybe just one or the other. But avoid trading those particular patterns at that specific time, unless you guys have been doing some fundamental research as far as looking into the 10K forms and the annual reports, which I doubt any of you guys will ever do because they are incredibly dry and incredibly boring. All right, now when it breaks out, you're going to be looking for two things. Is there any resistance really close by? And by really close by, I mean within like two to three percent. Is there a moving average like that? Or is there, a, you know, maybe a Fibonacci line or so? There we go. If there's any of those two things right there, you're not going to be buying on the breakout of the actual pattern. You might wait one more day, and I know that will be hard for you guys here. You guys are going to wait one more day just for it to make sure that it's going to close above that level of resistance. Then you buy. Then you buy. I have seen it happen too many times because all I do for a living is look at charts that we break out above the triangle and then we get rejected by whatever moving average is there. It can be a flat level of resistance. It can be a Fibonacci level. It can be a moving average. It can be an Ichimoku cloud. It can be a lot of stuff. But if 
if you don't wait for it to actually break out of that extra level of resistance, over time, you're going to lose more money than you make. And I want to stress that very, very clearly here. I'm trying to explain to you guys what all the other YouTubers are not telling you and why most of you guys are not making money in the long term because you guys understand the basic concept, but executing it is a little bit more difficult. And it's why, of course, not everybody can freaking tra uh, you know trade full time. Okay. Now, now that you guys know that little tidbit, when you guys buy, when you guys buy the breakout, you will only open a position or the breakdown. You will only open a position in the last one hour of the trading day. And why is that? It's because the breakout is not confirmed until the daily candle closes above that breakout, above that level of resistance here on this triangle. All right. I have seen a lot of times this happen as well. Again, I have a lot of practice with this and I've made a lot of mistakes in my career and I'm hoping you guys will learn from some of these. You guys may see uh, a lot of times in the middle of the day that we'll use this as a level of uh, resistance right here. I think you guys can see that black line. Yeah. I've seen a lot of times throughout the day, it consolidates, it consolidates, it breaks it above, but in the last you know, uh, two hours, three hours of the trading day, it actually comes back down below and then it closes right here. And then from there, all that looks like on the daily candle is a wick. And then if for whatever reason, it doesn't have enough strength, it'll continue consolidating and maybe come back down. Maybe it'll break out the next day and that's when you're going to strike it. And the reason I tell you this is for a few different reasons here. If you're holding stocks, it might only affect you maybe 1% to 2% of profit down the road. But if you guys are trading options and it never breaks out, you're going to be losing like 20 to 30% on that investment, which is not going to be something good. You want to make sure you buy this and open a position in the last hour of the trading day, preferably in the last half an hour, okay? Um, sometimes the, you know, the price will continue, like it'll pop up and it'll keep on going, Right. And you can buy that if you want to, but I would really stress, I have seen a lot of volatility in the market lately where you know you think everything's going fine and at the last end of the day, boom, we see it tank. Uh, Finviz has a lot of examples of that. If you go look on the charts, it's just not something you guys wanna see happen. It'll it'll really hurt you. And especially if you guys are trading crypto with leverage, uh, you guys know I use BitGet, I have a link for it down below, I believe. If you guys you know are trading with leverage, that you know that potential fifty to sixty percent winner, if you, if you guys are trading with leverage, it can turn into a fifty to sixty percent loser because it never breaks out. So you got to be very very careful about how you trade that. Okay. Now, we're going to be using these couple levels of resistance right here just to talk about scaling in and out of positions, which is very very important. You have this first black line right here and the second black line right above it. All right. Now, when you open a position right here. You've bought it at the end of the day. You've done everything you need to do as far as your trading journal is concerned, right? And if you guys, uh, you guys will be using scale out zones before you even open the position. If you guys know what trading journal is, uh, or if you guys don't know what a trading journal is, look on my channel. I have a full explanation on it. Uh, if you guys don't have a trading journal, you guys will not become full time traders. Uh, it's as simple as that. You have to have some way of recording your guys' investments and keeping track of the plans you have for all of your open positions. If you guys don't have it, you guys will fail. Now, on that trading journal, you're going to have two stop losses and, well, one stop loss, excuse me, and two scale out levels, maybe more depending on how how long this consolidation has been going on. Uh, it, it's important to note that the longer the consolidation, the, lo the larger the breakout, all right? So if we've been consolidating for five days, we'll have a very small breakout. If we've been consolidating for like 180 days, you're going to have a beautiful, massive breakout at this point in time, all right? Now, but you're going to have a scale out zone here and a scale out zone here. And what that means is as you open the position, as you're making money, whether that's an option, stocks or crypto, at this point in time, you have unrealized gains, which means you have you have made no money whatsoever. All of the gains are unrealized. All right? Pretty simple. As it consolidates and it breaks out here, you're going to sell anywhere from 10 to 25% of your initial investment. All right? And that's to make sure you have locked in some profit, some profit. You need to lock in some profit right there. And then from here, you're going to place a stop loss on your position where you bought it at that exact price or one to two percent above it to make sure that no matter what happens, you're at least walking away with a two percent profit plus the initial stop loss here, okay? Because you want to be having somewhat of a trailing stop loss. If you guys have access to a trailing stop loss, make it a two to three percent trailing stop loss. That way, if it comes up and it never hits a scale out zone, you'll still make money when it comes back down because you'll at least be walking away with some type of profit. 
as you guys are new traders, it doesn't matter how much money you guys are making right now. It, it really doesn't. The fact is you're just gonna you're just supposed to be making money. If you can consistently make profit as you put more capital and as you make more capital, as you guys you know put that capital to work for you, you'll be making more and more money and it will start to actually compound in itself and making you you know pretty wealthy there and ho hopefully move you to that full-time level. Um, but you have to do it consistently. And that consistency re requires you not to think about making the, the most money you can uh, right away. It's a little bit here, a little bit there, but you, you're sure you're going to be making that money. That, that's the whole point of trading, which I don't think many people uh, quite comprehend, right? And so once you reach this scale out zone, you sell, let's just say 10% right here, okay? And then we might consolidate for a little bit, right? And then it might hit this scale out zone right here. You sell a little bit more and it may either break out or consolidate a little bit more at this level. And then after that, you're going to continue scaling out at each scale out level using that three to four percent, uh, excuse me, two to three percent uh, tr uh trailing stop loss that will uh, make sure that no matter what happens you're going to be making profits now it may continue going up from there over the long run but you want to be using that money to make you more money somewhere else by then and part of that is comes to the fact that if you guys are trading options you have a time limit for when your options expire all right uh, as far as stocks goes you really don't want to be holding something too long because after the, the first initial pump, it's going to consolidate into another pattern again. You don't want to be waiting for the other pattern because maybe it's a reversal pattern. Maybe uh, the market's not looking as hot, you know, a few days down the road or a few weeks down the road, okay? Or if you guys are trading with crypto, uh, you're afraid that there could be a big boom or uh, see me a big crash out of nowhere, like which typically happens in crypto every now and again, right? Because if you guys actually look at the Bitcoin charts right now, we are in a massive ascending triangle and we're coming from up and we're going down. So most likely we should be breaking down here pretty soon. Uh, but that's for another video, right? So that's how you would want to trade on the way going up. And if you guys have any questions whatsoever during this video, uh, feel free to comment them down below in the description. I'm always happy to help you guys out, right? And that's how you would trade it. If everything goes well, you're going to be using those scale out levels, a trailing stop loss of 2%. If you guys don't have access to trailing stop losses uh, for whatever reason, uh, what you guys would do is go over to trading view, right click on the level, uh, uh, right click on the uh, chart, and you could actually set an alert for that, okay? So that's, that's what you'd be doing there. Now, let's go with the other scenario here where you buy, and for whatever reason, it doesn't work out. No YouTubers talk about this if it doesn't work out. So... Before you even make this trade, again, we're going back to the trading journal, you're going to be looking for a previous level of support here, somewhere around here, all right? And that level of support, it could be a trend line coming down, could be a trend line going up, or it could just be this level right here, you know, right there, okay? You're going, if you buy this and it's not working out and it starts breaking back down, I'd recommend having a stop loss of anywhere of 2 to 5% on the investment here. And then what you'd be doing, or you could be using a straight level of uh, support right here. Although support sometimes tends to be below that 5%, which I don't feel like losing more than 5% on any investment unless it's options. And then I'm prepared for that based off of the amount of capital I put into that initial trade, okay? All right. So if it decides to start coming back down, and let's say you have a stop loss of 2%, you're going to lose 2% of the trade, you're going to be out, you will have not made any money. In fact, you would have made a loss in this scenario that is okay to take a loss, all right? The reason you guys are gonna have stop losses here, or if you guys wanna be more aggressive and have the stop loss be a little bit lower for like maybe a five to 6% stop loss, right? The reason that you guys have stop loss stop losses is to stop you guys from becoming bag holders. If you guys are a bag holder, you tend to hold on to uh, stocks, coins, options a little bit too long. So, and, and something else here that you guys really don't need to worry about too much, when you guys are a bag holder, you've lost more money than you needed to. You would have been fine taking a two to five percent uh, loss on that investment, but now you know after all that stress of like, oh my god, is it ever going to go back up? You end up taking like a 20, 30, maybe even a fifty percent uh, loss on the investment, and then you're just sour about it because you've been stewing over it for a, a large, a long period of time. Just like, is it ever going to go back up? I'm mad at this. I'm mad at this, and it kind of ruins the. Um, you know the job which is trading you you do want to have fun at your job right now that's kind of that's the bad scenario there take the loss move on there are times where it comes back down here and then eventually it ricochets back up it's not as likely and it, it's it's not going to happen most of the time most of the time you will be mad at yourself for not doing that trade now you will have all this information in your trading journal before you even execute the trade 
before you even open that trade in the first place, you will have all of this written down so that if it does occur, the, the trade will happen with or without you because you're gonna have it set as a stop loss, right? And then, you know, unfortunately you take a loss, you write it down and you can write a little bit of notes about what's happened there. All right, so now, and I know that's not something you probably wanted to hear to be frank, but uh, take the loss, take the loss, take the loss, take the loss. If it doesn't go away, just take the loss. It could make money down the road. Don't worry about it. Don't, because over the long period of time, trading that way will lose you more money than it'll make you, and, that, and that's the main point here, okay? And, uh, oops, sorry, my dog kind of came over here. He's been taking a nap. Uh, now, let's start talking about this from the point of view of shorting, okay? Point of view of shorting. And I want to stress this again. There we go. And then the breakdown here. Don't trade by the earnings, you know, earnings date, and don't trade by the dividend date, okay? Usually, there's a sell-off by the dividend date. And it's just not something you want to deal with here. And it, it, it leads to a little bit of unpredictability. I won't say it just comes down, but it's unpredictable. Now, from here, just like uh, how we would long it, you're going to buy. And in a perfect scenario, you would scale out at each level of resistance. And if you guys are shorting, the resistance is support levels. Just like for longs, uh, you know, resistances are uh, res uh, support levels are resistance levels, if that makes sense. Um there we go. So you would sell out here and you would sell out here each time it kind of ran into that. All right. Pretty basic. The same concept applies. But the one thing you have to be looking at as well here, which can be a little bit harder, especially as we're coming down, if we're reaching all time highs in an ascending triangle, there's not really many levels of resistance you guys have to be worrying about. Mostly GAN fans and maybe some, uh, you know, uh, extension Fibonacci levels. But when you're coming down, there are a lot of resistance levels. There are Fibonacci levels. There are like tons of old resistance levels that you guys have to worry about. Uh, like, uh, let me see if I can put this right here. Like this resistance level right here, this resistance level right there. It, it's not a fun time, all right? So these are gonna be a little bit more difficult to trade. Uh, and what tends to happen here is there's two ways you could buy this. Two ways you can buy this. So what happens most of the time is we break down and then we continue going down. Something else that happens, not everybody knows about this, is we break down, it has one or two days of reaching back up here to, uh, to this trend line here that we broke down below, and then it really starts the downturn right there. So, so one of the ways I'm gonna tell you guys how to trade this is you can either open the position right here, the short, or the put if you're doing options, and just hold it through both of these scenarios or you could open up 50% of your position right here where you, you have a set amount of money you'd want to invest in this position. You open up 50% right here. And if it does tap back up here, you add the other 50%. But if it doesn't end up moving back up, you don't invest that the extra 50% you had. You just live with you, what you had right here, okay? Or you can or you can stick to 100% investment at the beginning. Or you could stick to 100% investment if it actually does tip back up here. I know people that do not even trade on the breakout. If it comes back up here, they put 100% in there and they're happy with it, okay? Both of those are options to you, or options for you guys to consider. I'd recommend paper trading on both and seeing which one has made you more money uh, you know, over a month's period of time. And then from here, same thing. You're going to have your multiple scale at levels. And then from there, if it, uh, excuse me, when you scale up, 10 to 25 percent, 10 to 25 percent, until you guys are out of, uh, you know, out, out of the position entirely. All right, that's really the key here as far as trading the ascending triangle. And then the one last thing here I'll tell you guys about is what happens if it doesn't work. Pretty similarly to the uh, if we were going the opposite way, you guys want to have that two to five percent stop loss. That way, if we actually do end up breaking back up here, you guys are able to just say, hey. I took a 2% loss or a 5% loss. Unfortunately, I didn't make money this time, but I still have 95% of my initial investment that can be used for another trade down the road. And that's mostly just for stocks, guys. If you guys are trading options, that 2% of the, the price of the uh, the stock may actually result in 10 to 20% losses on your option. But again, it's better to lose 20% of your investment than 100% if it keeps going up, okay? And I cannot stress that enough. You Sometimes you just have to tear off the band-aid and be like, hey, it wasn't a good trade. I understand that. I'm still walking away with 80% of my investment. And I know some of you guys might not like that, but 
if you if you feel bad about walking away with 20% loss, that means you've actually invested too much in the position in the first place. If you guys are with options, if you guys are with leverage, the same thing. You want to make sure that uh, if you guys are trading with 5x leverage or 10x leverage, a 2% loss for you guys for, with a 10x leverage is 20% loss. So just keep that in mind before you make the trade. But again, take a look at that my uh, video as far as trading journals are concerned. They are going to be very very helpful for you guys to understand how to make this work. Okay, now. Here are some nuanced things that you guys may be um, looking for just to see if you guys want to be investing more capital into these ascending triangles. Was there uh, some type of bullish indication before the breakout happened that says, whoosh, this could be something really, really big? And what I mean by that was basically, was there a golden cross? A golden cross on the daily chart comes in two forms. If the 20-day moving average crosses above the 50-day moving average, that's a golden cross. If the 50-day moving average crosses above the 200 moving average, that's also a golden cross. And if either one of those things happens as the price has been going like this, starting down and then going up, right? That's a supercharge. You might like where if normal like you might have a normal standard of how much you invest during ascending triangles. If you have a normal, you put 100 bucks in there. If you have a golden cross happen a few days before that occurs, you are looking to add anywhere from 100x to 200 of that position, 200x of that position. So if you have $100 normally, you could add $200 instead or $300 for that position. And you can be more confident about that because you have a huge, major bullish indicator happening right before that, uh, before that breakout occurs, okay? Now, on the flip side, were there any death crosses if we were actually looking to break down from here? And a death cross is if the if the 20 moving average crosses below the 50 or if the 50 day moving average crosses below the 200. Those are death crosses. And if that happens, if you guys don't know what death crosses are, uh, golden crosses, I have videos on those as well. Then you're going to be much more likely to invest more, more when it actually does break down there. If it does break down, you're going to be much more excited about buying it and you'll be putting much more capital behind it, okay? And if you guys are buying options, instead of buying uh, options that are close to in the money, you can actually spread that out a little bit more because you know that move is going to be a li even a little bit more aggressive. And then the main point of all this is you're going to put all this information together to have an idea of what you should be doing. And this idea will be formatted before like, a, a few days before you even have to make the trade. All right, you're not going to just one day look at a chart and it's like, oh, look at that thing, it's breaking down and buy at the same date. You're going to have been working on this plan for a few days, understanding what the chart is doing. To become a very good trader, you're really only going to be looking at 20 to 30 stocks uh, or crypto coins, whatever you guys are trading, and you're only going to trade those ones. You're going to get familiar with them, you're going to understand what they do. Are you going to understand do they work well with head and shoulders patterns, descending triangles, descending triangles? If they don't work out well with this pattern, you're not going to trade it that often when this pattern occurs, okay? You're just not. You're going to be using all of your data to understand how the chart reacts on a you know day-to-day -day basis, and when it breaks out, what does it do normally? Does it have a lot of false breakouts like Tesla? Does it have a lot of clean breakouts like Apple or Microsoft? You're going to be looking at these charts for a while here and take your time to really practice this practice this because if you don't, you're, you're in for a world of hurt. And uh, you know it, it can just be a very, very bad experience overall. And you never want to have a bad experience while trading because that means you've frankly lost some money. And uh, money is quite important these days, especially with these high inflations that we've been seeing. Now, uh, and this is just, we're going to talk about one example before I wrap things up here. Let's say a we have an ascending triangle that it has been consolidating for 150 days. So it's been consolidating for a long time. And then we have a death cross happening uh, a few days before we start testing out this support level right here on this breakdown here. And we have an ascending triangle that started off high and it's been coming down. And then most likely, as we know, it'll break down from here. Okay. What do you do in that scenario? Just think about it for a second. Correct. Correct, correct, correct. You are going to be putting a larger position than normal because you know it's been consolidating for a long period of time, which means the move is going to be much more drastic. You're also going to be uh, you're also going to be uh, adding more money in there because you also have the death cross coming, okay? And then just but you're still going to have those safetyness that we talked about. If there is a Fibonacci level or a uh, moving average that's really close, you're still going to wait for it to come down below that before you open the position otherwise you're going to be looking at a world of pain and you know unfortunately that's just the way it is right um and then as you hit those scale out zones you're going to be scaling out the same amount 25 percent 10 percent 25 percent 10 percent 50 percent 75 percent whatever you guys feel comfortable scaling out as but you're going to be scaling out nonetheless and every time you scale out you're going to be writing that down in your trading journal and you know as i said before 
you're gonna have all of these levels, this level, this level, and this level in your trading journal ready. So if it does hit, you're gonna be fine. And then you're gonna be placing that two to 3% trailing stop loss on it. So if for whatever reason it breaks this one, breaks this one, but it comes back up right here, it'll sell and you'll still would have made the profit from here to here, also taking the profit from here to here and the profit from here to here, which makes sure that you still walk away with a decent amount of profit, which makes that trade worthwhile, okay? So thank you guys, everybody, for watching the channel. Uh, please make sure to subscribe. And uh, sorry for being a little bit more boring than the other YouTubers, but I hope this information kind of taught you a little bit more. And if you guys have any recommendations on how I should do these videos in the future, please let me know in the comments down below. Thanks, everybody.